Hello everyone, my name is Nuvala and welcome to another video. Today we're building an automatic brewing station inside of a church. Let's go check it out. So when you enter the front side of the church, it actually leads you to the interface of the automatic brewer. You can see the brewing stand right here. It's currently holding a couple of water breathing potions. And when I press that button, they get added to the chest below, or the barrel. And new water bottles are added to the brewing stand. And some nether wart is already added to make awkward potions. Once the awkward potion is done, you can actually move to the lectern. On it is a book. And that book contains 15 pages, each page corresponding to an item that can be added to the brewing stand. So for example, if we want to create a potion of swiftness, we want to add some sugar. So we select this page, we press done, and then we press that button. What will happen now is behind this wall, the system will select sugar and add it to the brewing stand. And it's now creating a potion of swiftness. When the potion is nearly done, you can actually also add, for example, redstone. Press done, press the button, and redstone will be added to the system. And when that's done, you will have a longer lasting potion of swiftness. All you gotta do now, there you go, is press this button, it will be unloaded from the brewing stand, added to the chest below, and new water bottles and a nether wart are added to the brewing stand. And you can create your next potion. So that's it for this part. When we go to the side, and we enter the church on this side, you can actually see all the items that we can add to the brewing stand right here. All you gotta do when you get some items is add them to these barrels and they will be fed into the system. I think it's important to mention that I didn't come up with this redstone design on my own with the lectern. This is actually a build by Rexstone and I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. Go check him out because he makes some awesome tutorials. Now let's go and build this. Now here's the layout of the build. Please note that the red squares indicate that you need to start on the fifth level, not from the ground up. Start by filling in the floor where you'll create your potions. You can place a lectern on this block, place a barrel right next to it. Face a hopper inside that barrel and place your brewing stand on top of it. Then place two more hoppers, one from the side and one from the top. Should be feeding into the brewing stand. You can place a double chest on this hopper. This will contain your water bottles and place powder. After that, just fill in the wall and don't forget to use a stair on top of the double chest. Otherwise you can't open it. Okay, so now we're gonna create the redstone circuit. Go behind the spruce button, which is this block, place down some blocks underneath. It should be a V shape. Create some space to lay down your redstone. We start with a couple of redstone dust and we place a redstone torch on this block. Then create a T shape and place another block right there. Place redstone right here, a redstone repeater here Another redstone repeater set to three ticks, one more facing the back. Should look like this. Now in front of the third repeater you placed, place another block and then create a line of 12 blocks with redstone on top. On the 13th block, place it higher and place a redstone torch on the end of it. I hope this makes sense. Okay, now we move on to the next button. This circuit empties the brewing stand and refills it with nether wart and water bottles. Place a block underneath and place a redstone repeater on top of that. This will send a signal through this block. We'll place one there and here. Place a redstone dust on that one. Place a redstone torch right there. 
Now we'll start on the circuit for the lectern. Place two blocks on top of those repeaters you've placed. And then create a line all the way to the back alongside the redstone torch. Place redstone on top of all of those blocks, all the way to the end. And finally, you'll want to place a comparator on top right here, with the two sticks facing into the wall. You then want to cut off the redstone by placing five blocks one place apart. Okay, now for the second part of the lectern, place some blocks in this order. Place a comparator this way and make sure that you put it in subtract mode. And place two redstone dust like this. Then place blocks in this order. all the way to the back. The redstone should light up. Now you want to place comparators and redstone dust in this order a couple of times. And at the back one redstone dust and one comparator. Again, at the places where the redstone connects, you want to place a block to cut off that connection. And a very important step is that you make sure that you place a redstone torch right here. Okay, from now on it will get easier, trust me. You want to place redstone torches on the side of these blocks. They should all turn off immediately. Then you can place blocks on top of those torches. On top of those blocks, starting from this one, you want to place droppers facing upwards. From the hopper, which is feeding into your brewing stand on top, you want to place hoppers in a line going all over the droppers and they should all be feeding into each other. These transport the items all the way into your brewing stand. Then place some hoppers on the side of the droppers. These will feed from your storage into the droppers. On top of those hoppers you'll place some barrels and in these barrels you will store all of the items that you want to use for your brewing stand. Okay, so now it's time to fill the barrels. It's important to note that the position of the barrels from left to right corresponds to the page numbers in the book you'll be using. The first barrel from the left is always netherward. The second barrel corresponds to the first page in your book and the third barrel to the second page, and so on, all the way to the right. Okay, now let me show you how to set this up. First, you want to place three water bottles inside of your brewing stand and some blaze powder. Next, in the hopper next to it, place four water bottles and then a stack of blaze powder. And then in your chest, you can place two stacks or more of blaze powder and fill the entire chest with water bottles. This is now actually pretty much set to go. The only thing you need to do is place down your book. Remember that the positions of these barrels need to correspond with the pages in your book. So the first page is redstone. Second page is glowstone, the 
the third page is a fermented spider eye and so on all the way to the phantom membrane in the end on page 15 in my case. You can make this any order you want, just make sure that they correspond to the positions in the line. And make sure that this book has 15 pages, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so the brewing station is actually pretty much done now. Time to start on the build. First of all, we'll work on the walls. Just follow along these steps. All the pillars you see right now are five blocks tall. For the pillars you want to use stone bricks and for the walls I always like to mix up natural stone and some stone bricks. You can also use some andesite if you like. Next up, let's fill in the floor with some spruce planks. Then, on the side entrance, place two pillars of five blocks high stripped spruce wood. At the front entrance, place two pillars of four blocks high. And on the other side, also place two pillars five blocks high. Let's work on the entrance. Using some spruce slabs and cobblestone stairs, we can make a pretty majestic entrance. Simple but effective. Create some space for a door. And create a shape for the roof. Then the wall behind it should be five blocks high and three blocks wide on each side. And then we'll create the shape of the big roof. There you go. On the other side of the church, fill in the wall, but make sure that in the middle you create a cross. It's a church after all. I like to differentiate the cross by using some stone bricks and some natural stone. And then make it the same shape as the other side. And there you go. Next up, filling in the walls, leaving space for windows, and creating the side entrance. Which pretty much is the same as the front entrance. On the other side of the build, I like to just close it off, because I don't need it. Then grab your cobblestone stairs and create some sturdier bases around the pillars and also use them for creating windows with some more detail. Do this all around the build. Then place some upside down cobblestone stairs which will carry the roof which is up next. Also do this all around the build. Finally, also place some upside down stairs along the windows for some extra detail. And you can put stuff on it if you want. For example some lanterns later on, maybe. Time to start working on the roof. 
for the front entrance, we'll just make a simple stair, upside down stair kind of roof. big roof there's one extra step and that's that we'll place a spruce block on the first level otherwise it's just the same so that's a stair upside down stair stair upside down stair all the way to the top you want to repeat that on the other side and you will end up with this Place a spruce fence and a spruce trap door on the edge of the roof, on top. You can place a lantern here later on. And follow along the build with your spruce stairs until you get to the side entrance where we'll also make a roof made of stairs upside down stairs. Work your way around the build until it looks like this. Okay, so next up we're gonna work on the tower. Find this pillar and move two blocks inwards. So that's this block in front of the nether ward. Now on the fifth level, that level, you want to place a stripped spruce wood. You wanna make that five blocks in both directions and you want to make a square, or actually square without the corners. Okay, now on the corners you want to place seven blocks of stripped spruce wood. And once you're finished with that, you can fill in the walls using some natural stone and some stone bricks. So at this point I noticed I forgot the spruce fences and the spruce trapdoors on the edges of the roof, so make sure you don't forget those. You can create some windows in the tower as well. You want to do that on this side and on the other side, not on the front and the back, because those will be covered by the roof, which we'll add on next. So yes, I made it on all four sides here. I will correct that in the time lapse you're about to see next. First we'll create the edge of the tower roof, which is made using spruce trapdoors and some spruce slabs. If you place them like this, no mobs will be able to spawn. And fill in the walls of the side entrance and the other side as well, otherwise, well, you can look straight into your build. Okay, so next up is filling in the roof using deep slates. I like to mix up the deep slate and just make sure that the first layer is two blocks high and all the other layers are one block high. On the top of the roof, you want to alternate spruce slabs and spruce trapdoors and use some spruce stairs to climb up the roof from the side entrances. And for the tower, I suggest you try some stuff out, because I've noticed that every single time when I build this roof, it looks slightly different. The first one was more like a peak, and this one is a little bit more round. To be honest, I like both. Just make sure that you spawn proof the roof, using some deep slate balls and a lightning post on top, to prevent lightning from striking your church. Some of the final details will be to add some windows. I like to use light blue, but you can use any color of glass you like. Don't forget to put doors into your door posts and use some lanterns to light up your build. Use some leaves to add some color to your build. You can make it grow all the way onto the roof to give it a more overgrown look. And the last step is to finish the entrance using a couple of spruce slabs and some spruce fences.
that's it for the outside. You're done. Now you can decorate this build any way you like. For example, I'd like to store all of my potions up here. Each potion has its own barrel. And in the end, in the tower, you can create, for example, a living room or actually a bedroom. Anyway, that's it for me. I've taken way too long for this video already and you deserve to enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your new automatic brewing station and all the potions that you will ever need. If you enjoyed the video and you like the build, let me know by liking the video or leaving a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Have a great day and see you in the next one. Cheers.